Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting game from round 8 of the uh, Croatian Grand Chester being played in Zagreb. It's Anish Giri with the white pieces against Shakhtar and Mamedyarov. Uh, Mamedyarov not uh, having the greatest tournament so far or the greatest year for that matter. Uh, but, uh, you know, let's, let's just see how he does in this game and then we're gonna talk about uh, that a bit more. So without further ado, let's just uh, check it out. We do we do have one game, but it's from the post game. Uh, sorry, one photo, but it's from the post game analysis. We're gonna show that later, and uh, we said that we were gonna show one more game from round eight to also be uh, to also check out the standings. Uh, so without further ado, knight f3 by Giri. The red is on the board. We have c6, c5, and now Giri transposes into the Sicilian e4. Uh, we have knight to c6, and now bishop to b5. Giri goes for the uh, Nizhmedino Rosolimo attack. Uh, bishop to d6 by Mamedyarov, castles by Giri, and now bishop to d7. Now the knight can move uh, with c3, preparing d4 by Giri, and knight to f6, now putting pressure on the e4 pawn. Uh, with rook to e1, uh, defending the pawn, but also uh, after the bishop is under, uh, is attacked, you will not be you will not be forced to capture. You can also just nicely tuck that bishop in away for for later. So uh, with a6 by Mamedyarov, and now bishop to f1. You can go to e2 as the rook has to keep an eye on the e4 pawn. Uh, bishop to g4 now by Mamedyarov, and now uh, you could go h3, just uh, ask the bishop where where it wants to go. But first d4 by Giri. Uh, we have C captures, C captures, and now D5 by Mamedyarov, asking do you want to advance the pawn or capture. Uh, we have captures by Giri, knight captures, and now knight to C3. Continuing development, attacking the knight on D5. Uh, we have E6, preparing to develop the dark square bishop, and now H3. Uh, asking what do you want to do with the bishop. And here capturing on f3 is the main line, but Mamedyarov opts for a different one. We have bishop to h5, and now he says, okay, uh, my bishop is still very nice here. If you want to get rid of it, you're going to have to weaken uh, the, the, the position in front of your king. You, you're going to have to push g4. And this is exactly what Giri does. We have g4, bishop to g6, and now uh, if you could somehow, uh, you know, uh, castle your king to safety with black, develop your pieces and start an attack on the king side, then the weakened uh, king, king side uh, will be favorable for black. But Giri doesn't allow it. First knight captures on d5. You cannot recapture with the pawn as it's pinned here, so you have to capture with the queen. Queen captures on d5 by Mamedyarov and now bishop to g2. And this is nothing new, this has all been played before. But now already white is threatening some, well, not so nasty discoveries, but they are discoveries. Uh, as there's uh, the bishop is aligned with the queen on d5. So here you you either want to move your queen away or you just uh, play bishop to e7 and get ready to castle your king to safety as soon as possible. But here uh, Mamedyarov uh, actually plays queenside castle and it's, uh, well, it does make sense if uh, white uh, doesn't have a good way of, uh, of uh, taking advantage of uh, the spin uh, because uh, white already has a pretty much uh, messed up pawn structure, not messed up, but uh, the pawns are already advanced in front of the white king, so you can just start an attack, open up uh, the, the game, and you will have a nice, uh, well, uh, maybe even winning attack with black. The problem is, Giri does have uh, a very nice uh, discovery here. He plays knight to e5. Instead of knight e5, there is also a very sneaky line bishop to g5, just attacking the rook, and after f6, only then knight to e5. And after, well, you have to do something with the queen. After queen captures on d4, now queen to b3. But it's really just uh, uh, maybe too much of a <laughs> Mikal Tal kind of position to uh, expect anyone to go into this. For example, if pawn captures on g5, then you can capture on c6. After b captures, you're going to go rook a c1. And everything is under attack here. The e6 pawn is under attack. The c6 pawn is under attack. The rook is on such a beautiful, uh, f uh, you know, uh, file here. Uh, also, this rook covering the e file. It's just an uh, entire mess of a position, and white should uh, prevail in, in this uh, line. Uh, but Giri goes for a different one. He after a queenside castle, he goes for knight e5 right away. Attacks the queen. We have queen captures here, and now queen to f3 by Giri. And this has all been played before there is actually one game that reached this position now you don't have the option of capturing the knight because queen captures on b7 is checkmate so you have to figure out how to go about it there is one game where queen to b4 was played and it's actually a nice move now it uh, now you will be able to capture as the queen also guards b7 but you're also threatening the rook here so first uh, white will have to waste the move to develop the light square bishop but uh, it's uh, not all that possible sorry about that <coughs> 
uh, not all that possible to even play this with black because white is already winning here. Uh, but uh, instead, Mamedaro played rook to d5. And this is now a new move, which is uh, really interesting as this is already such a difficult position to play for black. And, uh, well, it's uh, uh, very often that we will reach a new position that is, o that is equal and then something will happen. But it's very rare that we will have a position where white is just better and then that Mamedaro <laughs> plays a new move in that position. Uh, but okay, now, uh, okay, the uh, this diagonal is blocked, so you have to figure out what to do here, but now the f7 pawn is weak, so Giri, Giri just captures it. Uh, with knight captures on f7, and now rook to g8, getting the rook out of the way, and now knight to g5. And there is no way to defend the e6 pawn, you can't push it as queen captures on d5 is coming, the pawn has to guard the rook on d5. Uh, so bishop to d6 here by Mamedyarov, and now just knight captures on e6, with an attack on the queen here. Uh, we have queen to b4, attacking the rook on e1, so now you have to waste a move uh, to develop the bishop to connect your rooks. Uh, we have bishop to e3, and now rook to e5, getting the rook out of the way here, as uh, the bishop w is attacking the d5 square after the queen moves. But also now the rook and the queen are attacking the e1 rook, so if the bishop moves, uh, there could be uh, some problems. Uh, for white, as the bishop also covers the h2 square after the rook move, so it could be could be kind of dangerous. Uh, so uh, we have a3 by Giri, uh, pushing the queen back, and there aren't all that many squares the queen can use. The bishop covers this diagonal. If you move some somewhere like a5, the, then b4 is coming, so it's uh, uh, not a lot of squares. Uh, Mamidarov accepts the challenge. He plays queen captures on b2, and now just rook a to c1. And it's very difficult uh, to do this. The problem is uh, your <laughs> knight on e6 is under attack. But uh, Giri plays this wonderful attacking move rook a to c1 uh, without even uh, bothering to, to try and save the knight. Because you cannot save the knight. If you play something like knight to f4, then you get bishop to e4, push the queen back. After queen to d1, you can just trade everything. Bishop captures, king captures. And now, uh, as your king is uh, uh, on the second rank, uh, the same as the queen, you can play rook captures on e3. Now, you cannot capture with the pawn. If you capture with the rook, you lose even the knight here, as the rook will not be guarding the knight. So here, you have to go into queen captures on d6, rook captures on e1, rook captures on e1, and after rook to d8, you will have this uh, position where the material on the board is completely equal and white will not be able to do much here. So Giri doesn't bother with this knight to f4 idea. He goes straight for the attack, rook a to c1, and now you force black to capture the knight here. Because now you're pinned here along this line, and now knight to d4 uh, is a very nice escape route, as the knight will not be able to capture on d4. Uh, so Mamedyarov captures the knight, we have rook captures on e6, but now uh, feel free to pause the video and try to find what was Giri's idea uh, in sacrificing this knight on e6. Uh, continue the attack with white uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. For those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. You are an excellent uh, sacrificer of both knights and exchanges. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, rook captures on c6. This is uh, what Giri had in mind, because now if you capture it, then it's just a very nice, uh, well, finishing sequence. Queen captures on c6, king b8, now you can play queen to a8, check, king goes to c7, now queen a7, check. King to c8, you will play queen captures on a6, check, and now after you move the king, uh, for example, either, either d7, then queen to c6, or if you try something like, uh, well, let's say, king to wherever, king to king to c7, uh, then you get uh, queen to c4 check and you start picking up material. Uh, or if king d7, if you defend the rook, then again queen to c6, like if the king uh, came to d7 right away, king e7, now you get bishop g5 check, king has to move, king to f7, uh, queen to d7 check, and now you either go up and then lose material as both the rook and bishop are guarding d7 square, or you're gonna go king to f8, and then finally queen captures on e6, and black just falls apart. So you cannot capture the rook, otherwise you're just, uh, you know, busted. So king to d7 was played by Mamedyarov, but now Giri continues uh, happily sa trying to sacrifice the rook, rook captures on a6. 
And again, if you capture queen c6, we go into the exact same line. Nothing really changes except, uh, well, bl black accepted the rook, <laughs> not uh, the first time, but the second time. It's the same, queen e uh, king to e7, bishop g5, king here, queen here, and we go into the exact same line with the pawn still being on a6, but it's uh, no different. Uh, so, after rook captures on a6, we have rook to b8, Mamedyarov brings this uh, rook over here to guard the b7 pawn. But now comes rook to a7. Uh, also a possibility for Giri was uh, rook captures on d6, but it's a really long, complicated line, and Giri saw that rook to a7 was enough, so he was probably uh, reluctant to calculate this line. Rook captures, rook captures, and then rook d1. Uh, and after rook captures, queen captures, uh, king king somewhere, uh, the queen and the bishop pair will be enough to, to end this game. For example, queen d6, and now it's very hard to find a useful move for black. For example, white can just go bishop d5 followed by bishop g6, it's game over. You can try something like check, king here, and then queen to f6, offer a queen trade, but still, queen c5, check, king to d7, and then whatever you do, let's say bishop to g5 will be uh, e enough to end this game for white. Uh, you cannot go for this trade here. If you trade queens, then you are only up material for a brief moment as bishop to f4 check here uh, takes the rook. So not an option. So although it was a very nice line, uh, it takes a lot of calculating to do. And, you know, it's an open board. So why, why risk it? Uh, Giri decided to go for a nice safe line. We have rook to a7. Uh, and now comes uh, bishop to e4, attacking the queen. Queen to f7 check. Now, if you block with the bishop, then you get a rook d1, not something you want to do. So rook here, so you cannot capture the bishop as your queen is under attack. Queen to c4, and here we have rook to c8, attacking the queen. Also, possibility was queen to c2, trying to trade queens, but then queen d4, uh, white just gets out of the way. Uh, so rook c8 by Mamedyarov, and now comes queen to a4 check. And now, what do you do here? Uh, well, uh, it's uh, hard hard to decide. If you go king to e6, then the rook no longer guards the bishop. Queen captures on e4 will come with check. Uh, so bishop to c6 was played. Uh, the queen is now under attack, but bishop captures on c6. You cannot capture with the pawn. The pawn is pinned. Uh, rook captures on c6, and here we have rook to c1. And it was, in fact, in this position, on move 31, that Shahri Mamedyar resigned the game. As, well, as it usually is, there is nothing to do here. Uh, so what's the idea behind rook to c1? Uh, well, the threat is rook captures on c6, and there's no way to prevent this, whatever you try. Uh, like we said, the b7 pawn uh, is pinned, you will not be able to recapture, so you may try something like bishop to c7, now the pawn will be able to recapture, but it doesn't help. Just rook captures, and after pawn captures, you can go bishop f4. Now, put uh, some pressure here, there's no way to defend this, well, no good way, you can try king d8, now, okay, the rook guards uh, the bishop, but then queen captures on c6, the threat is queen, uh, rook, just rook to a8, uh, and if black wants to prevent this, let's say queen to b8, you will get queen d5 check, and after king to c8, queen to g8 check, and now there's no more, uh, there, there is no more defense. Uh, whatever you try, you can't block with the bishop, because then bishop just captures queen, if you block with, uh, well, if you just, uh, what, what else is there? Uh, if you go something like king d7, then queen captures queen, and you cannot recapture because the bishop is now pinned here. So it's just a huge mess of a position that really favors Giri. So after rook to c1, Mamidarov decided that there was no point in, point in continuing this game. And really a beautiful, beautiful miniature by Giri. And uh, we have to ask ourselves, uh, where wh what happened to black here? Uh, I don't know, uh, it seems li like really here in this position his uh, spidey sense just wasn't working uh, here after bishop to g2. If, if your opponent plays bishop to g2, okay, he advanced the pawns in front of his king, but do you really want to castle queenside here? It seems that uh, Mamedyarov decided that there was no danger here, but in pretty much every game in this tournament Mamedyarov lost, he just, uh, you know, l looked at a position and he assessed it as safe for, for him, uh, when in fact it wasn't, it was a very dangerous position to be in. And uh, a lot of you have been asking that what's going on with Mamedyarov last year, he was like 2820 something, uh, you know, num number three in the world. Uh, and uh, this year he dropped like the 2750. Uh, but I, I don't know what's uh, what's causing this, but I do know that he's expanding his family. He got a son, a uh, little Raul Mamedyarov, 
and you know uh, ha you know expanding the family will do that some of your other you know hobbies or, or jobs will, will have to be on hold and it's uh, I, I I can only imagine but uh, you know probably getting uh, a, a little a little boy a, a son into the family uh, will take some toll on, on your chess playing skills but I don't think this is something permanent I think he will you know j get back to it and that it's not going to be uh, a, a real issue for him so that's that's what I think, but you know, could be could be anything else. I mean, what do I know? Uh, but you ask, so uh, I try to, I try to answer. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, we're gonna show the standings, and we do have a nice photo of two of them uh, analyzing after the game. There you have it. Uh, you know, just a nice little friendly chat after after the game. So uh, let's just enjoy that for a second. And also let's check out the standings after round eight. So here it is. Magnus Carlsen still in first place, six points, the So lead, followed by Wesley So, only one with uh, any real chance of catching up to him. But okay, I mean, those with four and a half, it can still happen. It's, uh, you know, it's not impossible. But Wesley So in second, five and a half, then uh, with four and a half, uh, Fabiano Caruana, Yanni Pomnichu, former leader up until round six, and he's lost to Magnus. Levon Aronian, also four and a half, then with four, Ding Liren. Uh, and then a lot of people with three and a half, uh, Maxim Vashiel Lagrav, Anish Giri, Vishwanathan Anand, and Sergei Karakin. And in last place with two and a half points, Shahir Mamedyarov and Hikaru Nakamura, who can seem to catch a break this tournament. So, uh, I don't know, what's your opinion as to why this game uh, went <laughs> south for uh, for Mamedyarov? Was it really just a... Uh, I don't know. It seems to me like really just a case of his spidey sense malfunctioning, but uh, I don't know. Uh, that, that's what I think. Uh, but yeah, uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Johan Stervander, uh, Michael Burns, uh, Marcello Mariano, uh, Joel Goodman, and Matthew Holm for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the coverage of this very nice event, checking up on your suggestions as usual, and, well, uh, after this event, we're going back to the Capablanca saga and the match with Emmanuel Lasker. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.